Hey, welcome back. My name is Chris, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I made this workbench and cut all the attached parts, or most of them, using a CNC router. Spoiler alert, I don't even own a CNC router. Now, as I said in the intro, I don't have a CNC router, but I do have SketchUp, and I was able to design this bench in SketchUp and partner up with a friend in my local community to get this bench built. This video will cover some of the design features and the CNC cutting process. This is also the first video being released in a build series, so make sure that you're subscribed and notified so that you don't miss the next video. And of course, I have plans available for both the CNC cut and non-CNC cut on Etsy. And if you don't have a CNC, don't worry, I've got some tips on that also. As usual, I'll put chapter links down below. I originally designed my bench in a notebook in 2013 and then built my first version of this between 2015 and 2020 from two by fours and plywood using pretty much basic tools. It worked really well for my projects and survived three moves with the army. I've been taking note of improvements I would make along the way and my goal was to incorporate all of those changes into this bench and make it even more producible for others. I was deployed for most of 2021 and during some of my non-work hours, I published plans for my original bench on Etsy and began to design this all plywood version. All of the parts of this bench lock together with rock solid mortise and tenon and large finger joints. All of the components interlock in multiple directions to stiffen the entire frame and prevent twisting and racking in a torsion box style frame. This holds the frame square and helps to keep the top flat. The workbench consists of two carts that are 47 and 3 quarter inches square and they're all made from 3 quarter inch plywood except the final top which is 12 millimeter Baltic birch. All of these parts can be machined on a four x four CNC. And if you have a smaller CNC, you can pre-cut some of the plywood to uh, four feet square so that you can fit it on your machine. The main cart of the bench can be cut from three sheets of three quarter inch plywood and either two sheets of five x five Baltic birch or one five x 10 sheet. If you can find five x 10 sheets, you can cut the entire main bench from three total sheets. I'm located just north of Nashville in the Fort Campbell area and there's a lot of hardwood distributors and large cabinet suppliers in my area, so I knew I'd have no problem finding somebody with a CNC shop. I also knew that there were some local guys with large CNCs, and I planned on reaching out to them when I got back. Ultimately, I ended up making friends with a guy named Jeff, or at Sergeant Maker on Instagram, uh, by way of the Military Makers podcast, and uh, we ended up hitting it off, and he helped me get this bench cut out on his router. So many thanks for him. I'll make sure I throw some links to his stuff down below and please go check him out and uh, absolutely go listen to the Military Makers podcast. They're a great community of military woodworkers and uh, they do their part to uh, share the word and, and give back to those that uh, have the struggle of uh, moving around and, and woodworking or are retirees and, and uh, not, not just woodworking. Um, they've interviewed people from all kinds of different crafts from uh, those that run a forge to uh, coin making to um, cooking and all sorts of uh, crafts and trades. So definitely uh, lots of cool people that they introduced through their podcast. Go listen to them. So once I had all the CAD files, I emailed them to uh, Sarge and he imported all those vector, all those files as a vector image into uh, VCAR Pro, which is the program he uses to prepare the cut sheets and tool paths. All of the accessory mounts, such as the drill press, boom arm, joiner, planer, table saw, mounts are all basic profile cuts. So all you have to do is determine the final thickness and set it up to cut the profile of those. And uh, once we proofed them and laid them out on sheets of plywood, I think it was one and a half sheets to do that stuff. Um, we started running them through the machine first while we worked on figuring out some of the final tolerancing on the main bench. We uh, just used screws to hold everything down. As a matter of fact, some of the screw holes show in the final top. We just figured locations on the sheet that weren't going to be cut <laughs> and then crossed our fingers that we wouldn't hit anything with the bit. But uh, screws work pretty well for holding these sheets down. All of the final parts were held in place with tabs. Um, this required cutting the tabs off the table with a utility knife. And then the tabs were, were cleaned up once I got the parts home with a flush trim bit at the router table. We used a quarter inch diameter compression router bit in order to minimize the uh, waste around the edges of the plywood and also to maximize the final top dimensions of the sheet. It also allowed us to get some nice tight radii there on these dog bone joints 
to where whenever the joint goes together, you just have a tiny little cutout for the dog bone corners here. And that worked out really well. And then all of our passes were pretty conservative. We ran a third depth of cut pass and just did three profile passes uh, for each of the parts. And for the dog holes, I think we used a spiral pass where the router bit plunges and spirals down. And so that ends up being a full kind of depth of cut and it makes it a one pass. So the bit kind of goes down and then comes up to clear the chips. And all in all, this thing has 111 parts and 48 of those parts make up this main workbench. This mock-up was a test cut that Sarge and I cut before running the final file. We did this to test fit the key joints. This is a bottom corner of the workbench and this simulates the top and then these are the, this is the side frame and end frame and then this is the bottom of a leg. And you can see how nice that fit is. This test cut was to make sure that we tolerance the joints correctly and we're gonna have that nice smooth fit that's not too loose but not too hard to fit together. Each one of the subtops has 16 different tenons that have to line up into the cutouts and I was really happy with the way it turned out and everything came together uh, quite nicely. What I did is I drew center lines for where I wanted to locate each of the tenons and I modeled both the female side and the male side around that. I modeled my, my mortises to exact nominal width and then I undersized the tenon by 10 thousandths of an inch to allow a 5 thousandths gap on either side. That ended up being just the right fit to uh, go together snugly but uh, also allow me to line up all those tenons and get them in there nice and square. As I was designing this, I talked with several uh, CNC router machinists and a couple other YouTubers and uh, decided that that 10 thousandths gap was pretty much the, uh, the norm. And uh, I'll also put a link down below to a couple websites that I found useful on uh, designing CNC cut parts. And uh, 5 thousandths is a little bit thicker than a sheet of paper standard, I think. Uh, I don't know what weight paper is about three thousandths of an inch, but basically printer paper is about three thousandths of an inch thick. So you're talking about a sheet and a half of paper thickness on either side. And once this is together and kind of glue swells it and everything, to be honest, that gap's even smaller than, uh, than that. This, uh, this gap's pretty much closed up completely. And just friction fit alone is uh, rock solid. And I recently acquired Fusion 360 and I'm redesigning the bench with parametric dimensions to update dog hole sizings and the actual thickness of your plywood. For those that don't know, parametric dimensions use formulas to control the model relationship. So it allows you to change an input value and it automatically updates the entire value. This is great for things like a CNC cut workbench because actual plywood thicknesses vary in the real world. And you may rather use 20 millimeter dog holes over three quarter inch. The three quarter inch plywood I used was birch veneer plywood to save some costs thinking it was poplar core. It ended up being some form of ultralight ply with an exotic softwood that literally weighs about a third the weight of a normal sheet of plywood. I did have some concerns about strength and screw holding, but the strength appears to be more than adequate and I used some strips of 12 millimeter Baltic birch to reinforce the legs in key locations um, where I needed good screw holding. Materials have inflated quite a bit even in the time since I purchased my materials. And even by the time I got around to purchasing materials for my bench, Baltic Birch had inflated over 100% from my prior purchases. And one supplier was even completely out of stock. Three sheets of plywood might sound like a lot of material, but keep in mind that the final bench is four feet by eight feet. And as an example, Matt from Tools Today built an all CNC cut workbench and he used four and a half sheets of ply for a two foot by eight foot workbench. And mine has a three, one and a quarter inch top and his has three quarter inch top. I think he designed a very rugged bench, but I also think it's a little bit over designed. I've been using my new bench for several months and I'm very impressed with the strength and stiffness. So literally everything you see here um, came out of five total sheets of four by eight, three quarter inch plywood and then uh, two five by five sheets of 12 millimeter Baltic birch. So not a bad use of plywood when you think about all the different sub projects that are involved in this. And I did have some left over and that includes this um, large sheet that I put the table saw on out here. So not a bad use of plywood and it's all uh, very strong, very stiff. As a matter of fact, you can't twist this frame without picking it up. It's so stiff the way those joints all lock together. We spent basically one long day of prepping the cam and running those sheets of plywood through his CNC. 
Now, uh, we had a lot of computer work to do before we were able to run those sheets since it was the first run and we were figuring out tolerancing, et cetera. So that could be reduced if you had actual ready to go vector files. Um, that could basically be reduced to setting your depths of cut and proofing your tool paths and putting plywood on the machine. So by using plans and other things that, that I've put together, you can save a ton of time on a, a project like this. So I'll show you a little bit of the PDF that goes along with this thing, because quite honestly, the images that I put together there from the CAD and the CAM files are probably the most descriptive way that I can show you the sheet layout uh, for both four by eight sheets and five by 10 sheets. And then once again, if you have a four by four router, um, or if you have a wide router and can let material hang off the end of it, there are ways to rig this up to um, cut it on a smaller CNC router. But once again, what I really want to encourage you to do is um, just look for those local CNC shops. You might be able to partner with them on some larger projects. I know that uh, from time to time, Jeff will take on larger projects that other people just can't do um, or partner with uh, some plaque makers and stuff local to Fort Campbell in order to cut out things that they just can't do in their own shops. So those kind of uh, router shops are able to take on additional work. Once I sent Jeff the files, he actually has a laser cutting cabinet too. So he cut this mock up out of three, it's the plywood thickness is just between an eighth and maybe five sixteenths thick. And he had some concerns about the stiffness of the legs and um, just the model in general. And so this was his test cut. Now there's a couple errors in this, just due to the nature of importing a 3D image into 2D space. Um, this top sheet actually imported inverted. So this final cut is actually a complete inverse of what this is actually supposed to look like. But that allowed us to proof the model and uh, check out the tolerancing on all these joints. And you can see this thing went right together and he used some super glue to put it together. And uh, it was a great proof of concept. And it's a pretty cool little model to have around the shop and, uh, and demo um, the concept to people on. But you can see that even with this super thin plywood, this thing is pretty, pretty rock solid. A couple key features are, of course, all the tenons interlock on each of the sides and these legs on the end go counter to the outside legs so that gives it lots of rocking stiffness. Um, you have this nice long tenon that has a good glue surface along both the inside edge of the sheet of plywood and the outside frame and then it's got a nice wide shoulder on it to prevent any kind of racking or rocking and uh, that could loosen up over time and then we've got these uh, additional torsion sniffers underneath to just make sure that this plywood is well supported and um, just the way everything locks together um, all the joints kind of reinforce each other in different directions so it just prevents anything from from racking or, or twisting and so it's a nice strong sturdy design even though it's only made out of a few sheets of uh, plywood so part of my lessons learned i was a little bit overwhelmed on how to design something like this i had no experience tolerancing things for cnc joinery like i said i had to uh to dig into what was available to me on the internet while i was in iraq and uh, people were really helpful when i asked questions on forums and ultimately i was able to come up with uh, the final design and get it tolerance right um, Fusion 360 is a whole new learning curve for me that I'm working through. And uh, eventually I will have a parametric model that's available for you uh, where I'll be able to publish plans custom for you by using that parametric model. But really what I wanna encourage you to do is if you're thinking about a project like this, go find a local CNC shop. A lot of those folks don't advertise because they work word of mouth. Um, a good way to find them is to talk to your local plywood suppliers I guarantee they've got a business card or know somebody that runs a CNC shop because they're probably one of their biggest customers. Um, those people come in and buy a pallet of plywood, you know, take it back to their place and, and batch out whatever project they're working on. Um, a lot of those people don't have to uh, advertise because people will find them. And so local woodworking forums and uh, Facebook groups are a great way to find those kinds of people. And uh, who knows, you might uh, luck into a friendship like I did uh, Jeff and I are definitely going to be friends for a long time 
and um, it's been great getting to know him and, and the military makers team. And uh, so who knows where that could go for you. And I just want to encourage you not to shy away from CNC projects, even if you don't own a CNC. It can bring a whole new capability to your uh, projects. And uh, it, quite honestly, can save you time if you want to produce more than one of something. So these are all the CNC cut parts for the new workbench. This includes parts for the rolling base cart, the table saw mount, the joiner mount, the planer mount, a uh, French cleat bandsaw or drill press mount, and here's a little scale model my uh, buddy built for me. He cut it with his laser cutter. He's the same guy that uh, helped me CNC cut all of these parts. Here are the top and plywood panels for the assembly, you can see we have a pre-cut for T-Track and router insert. And these are the three quarter inch parts that are going to uh, be the bases. And then these two will be the tops. And the dog holes all match. This is just the back side where they're not cut all the way through. Here's the top. Alrighty. So as you can see, I got a lot of work ahead of me to clean up these parts and do a rough dry assembly and then get this thing together. Can't wait. So the next thing I have to do is clean up all of these parts. So all of these were cut with a climb cut on the CNC and some of them left, we left a little bit of a skin, whether due to these tabs that hold all the parts together to keep them from flying up into the bit. But regardless, I have to come through with a flush trim router and clean off some of that fuzz and all that to get them ready for assembly. So that's what I'm going to do next. Hey, good morning, good day, whatever time it is where you are. I uh, finished routing all of the tabs off of the 111 parts. So that's done and it's time for a dry assembly. I'm going to go ahead and do that on my auxiliary assembly table. Hey, so I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're new here, I'm going to throw a subscribe button right above me. Feel free to click it if this is something you're interested in. I'll have lots more videos like it. I'm going to put a couple videos over here to my right that I think you'll enjoy. Feel free to check them out. If you found some value in this video, hit the thumbs up button. It helps this video do a little bit better. So do your comments. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on this video or your tips that go along with it. Thanks again for watching all the way to the end of the video, and I'll see you in the next one.